Hello, I'm Robin Gibson, and this is the Harvard House Money Morsel. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so you get a notification of when we have a new video released. I'm sitting today um, with our tax manager, Shelly Marino. Shelly, welcome. Good to have you again. Thanks, Rob. So we're probably going to do a series of uh, videos with Shelly because the topic we're going to investigate is quite deep. Um, but there's been some changes around income tax. They're not really changes, but it's this whole issue of residence versus non-residence. But it's certainly become more focused from a, a revenue perspective going forward. And we just think that people should be educated on it. So Shelly, first of all, let's explore resident versus non-resident taxpayer. What, what are the headlights that uh, we should be aware of? Okay, um, so to be a resident uh, taxpayer for South African tax purposes, um, it's either based on intention, whether you plan to come back to South Africa after your wanderings, okay. um, or it's on the number of days that you have been present in South Africa. Um, quite, com quite specific in terms of how many days, and it looks at the current year and the preceding five tax years. Okay. Um, it's one or the other, but in, in order for that to apply, uh, the DTA needs to be looked at because you cannot be exclusively tax resident in a foreign country. Um, that is specifically uh, would make you non-resident there, then the intention or the number of days doesn't apply. Okay, so you've used this term DTA, which we would be very familiar with, but uh, the viewers obviously don't know what a DTA is. So can you tell, you, tell us what a DTA is? So the double taxation agreement is um, an agreement between two countries. South Africa has a double taxation agreement with a lot of countries. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, a taxpayer cannot be tax resident in more than one country at one time. Okay. So uh, you apply the tiebreaker rules in a double taxation agreement um, to a person's specific situation, right. and that will determine which country has taxing rights of the taxpayer. Okay. So I, I think that probably where I see the greatest issue is for someone who maybe is working, let's just say in Dubai, um, they've been working there for 10 years, but their intention is always to come back to South Africa. They've got assets in South Africa. So they might seeing themselves, because historically it was, I haven't immigrated, and we had this thing called financial immigration, which has now disappeared. Um, so they might be thinking, well, I haven't immigrated, so I'm still a South African tax resident. That kind of person actually may not be because of, the situation, is that right? Absolutely. So um, in a case like that, you would definitely need to look at the double taxation agreement um, because that would possibly make them uh, resident in Dubai, depending on the tiebreaker rules. Um, so yeah, you could be non-resident, you know, maybe um, six months into living there. Um, it all depends on when you're tax resident in that country. And it's really vital that they go and see a foreign tax consultant yes. because you only apply the double taxation agreement when you're resident in South Africa and resident in a foreign country. Okay. So you become, I think the Income Tax Act talks about a dual tax resident and then the double taxation uh, agreement then applies to tie break who actually gets the right to tax your income first, Correct. Is that right? Correct. So as I said, you only apply the DTA when you're resident in both, both countries. countries. Yeah. Correct. So the first step is to go and find out, am I a tax resident in my new country? If I am and I think I'm a tax resident back in South Africa, yes. then it's go and check out the double taxation agreement. And if I now am, by tiebreaker rules, the tax resident in my resident country, I need to come back and let SARS know that I'm non-resident. Correct. Um, there's quite a few tax implications. Yes. Um, when you change uh, tax residency from South African tax residency to being a non-resident non for tax purposes, there's a exit capital gains tax calculation okay. that needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. It is on your worldwide assets. Right. Um, there are two exceptions, one being um, assets uh, or immovable property in South Africa, so okay. property in South Africa or assets of a permanent establishment. Um, like a business. Correct, okay. correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, with those two exceptions being out of it, 
um, you've got to bring your, your rest of your worldwide um, assets into the calculation. And the problem is you deem to have sold those assets, yes. but you actually haven't. Right. So cash flow um, can be, cash an flow can be <laughs> a problem. Yeah. Also, prof tax can be, you know, you can go from being a non prof tax payer for that tax year that you change residency, you yeah. could even be a prof payer. Yes. So, uh, so that's a provisional tax payer for those of you who maybe are <laughs> not familiar with the jargon. Julie, I think it's very interesting. I mean, certainly one thing that we're seeing now is SARS are requiring a certain high level of administration to tick the box as a non resident. Yes. In the past, we just submitted the tax returns based on non-resident and our understanding, but now you've actually got to get the box ticked and revenue are wanting a lot of paperwork for that, don't they? They are. So in 2021 tax return, we just needed to give a date yeah. of when you became non-resident, um, but they're now requiring uh, you to prove that you are non-resident. Yes. Um, and that's quite onerous. Uh, they're asking for a motivation letter as to why you think you're non-resident, um, a SAS declaration form, you have to choose on which basis you are non-resident. Yes. Um, you need to uh, do a copy of your passport, um, the stamps in your passport or uh, travel diary. Uh, there's a whole criteria of what you need to, yes. to submit. So it's just everything short of an autopsy, basically. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I think uh, we're going to explore this in an upcoming edition of Intuition. And we will certainly have Shelley back in the studio to talk in more detail about other aspects of this. Um, but Shelley, thanks for coming in to enlighten us. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.